You might remember last year when I found a super high-tech smart lock. That was pretty cool and had a lot of promises, a lot of cool features, but some of the models had a defect where you could rotate off the back panel and unlock the lock with just a small, simple screwdriver in only a few seconds. Not a feature you really want to have on something that's protecting your stuff. Well, TapLock reached out and said they did a total redesign of the lock and added a few more cool features and invited me to retest this new version. This is not a sponsored video. I bought these four locks with my own money. The real question is, am I taking apart this smart lock because I actually care what's inside, or is it because I want to use my brand new 18 volt brushless deep cut portable bandsaw? Let's get started. I bought four of these locks myself in order to have a sample size large enough to analyze properly. A smart lock is kind of like a regular lock, except it has a fingerprint scanner. It can also hold 500 fingerprints and stay charged for up to a full year. With the app, you can share access to the lock remotely, and it keeps a history of who's unlocked the lock. There's a lot going on. There's also really nothing wrong with owning a regular, normal-style combination lock, but it is cool to see how the technology is adapting into different industries. The main physical problem with the original TapLock 1 that I tested previously was that the back wasn't latched properly on some units, and it could just twist off, exposing easy access to the internals. This time around, I'm using the same super sticky GoPro mount to grab that circular back panel and try to rotate it off. And lucky for TapLock, these back panels are all staying attached and in place. So far, the TapLock 1 Plus has better construction than its predecessor. So far, so good, but we still need to get inside. And now for the fun part. My saw did a really good job of cutting through the regular zinc alloy metal body, which is to be expected. But when my saw reached the hardened stainless steel shackle, things got way more difficult. I flipped the lock around at the backside and started cutting again. Getting somewhere. I can definitely smell the battery that's in there. So it looks like this is the back panel right here. And even with it cut in half, it's still not rotating off, which does mean TapLock has solved that problem. It's definitely much more difficult to get inside of than last time. Let's see if we can pry this open a little bit. Nope. Finally. Even after being sliced in half, the lock is still locked. You can see the cross section of the fingerprint scanner going to the motherboard, which is separated by massive amounts of metal from the internal battery. The battery itself lasts for 3,500 openings, or up to a year without needing to be recharged again. And the whole contraption is also IP67 water resistant, so using it outside in the weather should be just fine. It looks like TapLock has also updated the internal screws, which was another one of my suggestions in the last video. These screw heads are like nothing I've ever seen before. So even if someone does somehow manage to get inside, they still can't access anything without the proprietary, hard to find screwdriver. That's a huge improvement. You can also see the charging port down here at the bottom with its rubber sealant to help keep water out. That's another perk over the previous design. Here's a close up look at the top half of the lock. We can see the same proprietary screw holding the front and back halves together and how much metal is involved in the overall construction. TapLock has done a much better job this time around with the redesign. Nice work. With the different internals, the screw redesign, and the added water resistance, the TapLock 1 Plus is what a smart lock should be. But like with most technology, it is relatively expensive. I'll put a link down in the video description if you want to check the current pricing. And yeah, thumbs up to TapLock for acknowledging a fault, switching up their design, and coming out with something better. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.